People want to know who is the fastest man. The great ones thrive on that moment. You always want to be the fastest on the block. When the gun goes off, you forgot everything you learned. The only thing that's going through your mind is run, run, run as fast as you can. It's a very overwhelming feeling being the fastest man in the entire world. Faster than any other human being before him. Ever since two devastating performances in the 2008 Olympics, Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt has dominated the sport of track and field. He has destroyed the sprint events, smashing world records, and making the impossible look routine. Usain Bolt has pretty much rewritten everything that we thought we knew about world-class sprinting. And what he's shown us in terms of what is possible, I think has revolutionized the sport. It's almost as if everybody else before him didn't really exist. He's by far the most naturally gifted athlete that I've ever seen. Tall, powerful, and graceful, the world's fastest man over both 100 and 200 meters wants only one more thing. My main goal is to become a legend. And if I want to be a legend, I'll keep winning year after year. So that motivates me to keep going. And while he keeps on winning, his impact on the sport is immeasurable. It's been huge. I mean, words can't really describe it. What he's done, having the world record, setting him at the major events, which a lot of people can't do, it's extremely hard, you know, and then to come back and break another record in another event is something that people haven't done before. He has become the man no one can catch. I know what it takes to stay on top, and that's the aim. I, I told you guys I want to be a legend, and I can't be complacent if I want to be a legend, so I got to keep working hard and keep focused. Few would argue, however, that Jamaica's number one son has already achieved his ultimate goal, to become a legend. Ever since Arthur Wint took gold in the 400 meters of the 1948 Olympics, sprinting has become an integral part of Jamaica's national identity. Stars like Don Quarry and Merlene Otty continue to put a tiny Caribbean island on the international sporting map. From 1948, we always had good sprint sprinters. Jamaica's always produced top people. Jamaicans have been sprinting. Well, I've been running fast way before us younger ones. We have had a strong sprinting background for years now. And I don't know if it's the genes or, you know, maybe the food or what it is, but I know that we're very fast. For an island of just three million people, Jamaica's dominance of the sprint events in recent years is unrivaled. Between 2008 and 2011, Jamaica produced five of the seven fastest 100-meter runners in history. I think the climate here is, is very great to train in. Plus, you have some phenomenal coach. And the athletes on a whole, you have we've been competing from high school. So I think doing it for a while, you're going to get um, better at it. Track and field is their number one sport. Not soccer, not cricket. Number one is track and field. When it comes to the world stage, track and field is really the only thing that we do have and always have had. Jamaica's fastest man grew up a long way from the hustle and bustle of the nation's capital, Kingston. Over 100 miles away and deep in the Jamaican bush is the sleepy village of Sherwood Content in Trelawney, where Usain Bolt was born in 1986. From an early age, it was clear that Bolt possessed a special sprinting talent, initially in the 200 and 400 meters. We realized it from the first day that we started training. Um, his speed was remarkable. And um, from that point of time, we knew that he, he was a special athlete. Anybody who saw him run young and looked at his body and knowing where he's from, Trelawney, Jamaica, that's, 
that was a can't miss, it's a no-brainer. Bolt immediately impressed in the Jamaican Boys and Girls National Championships, an annual event that sets the whole country alight. In front of 30,000 spectators, there is perhaps no greater test for school children anywhere in the world. The Olympics or the World Championships was nothing compared to competing at the Boys' Championships. The stadium was full to capacity, you, know, you couldn't see a seat. And I think that, that was also a very good experience, competing at that level and you know, getting that experience from a young age. 2002, he won the, the 200 at the, the Boys and Girls Championship. And I'm telling you that Usain was running, he was running really fast. Very lanky, tall, but fast. You just saw the raw, natural talent in this youngster and just knew that with some polishing, with some weight training, and as he got you know, more mature, that he was going to be really good. The thing was, looking at his size, you thought that, no, this should not be. He should be a basketball player, but man, he could move. As a youngster, he was a great sprinter in um, over the 200 meters and um, was very strong in the 400 as well, but he was very talented. Bolt carried that form into the 200 meters in the 2002 World Junior Championships, staged in Jamaica, so the expectation could not have been greater. The first time I saw him run uh, was as a 15-year-old, um, winning the World Junior title in 2002. Um, on home soil in Kingston. Um, and I remember the frenzy that that crowd went into. There he was um, running, you know, running and winning under a lot of pressure because that Jamaican crowd had not showed up that night to come see him get second. At the age of 15, Bolt was already the best young 200-meter runner in the world. Two years later, he underlined his class at the Karifta Games in Bermuda. That young man came off of the turn and began to shut it down about halfway through the main straightaway. So he ran about 150, and it was about a 60 degree Fahrenheit day. He ran 19.93. Uh, it's still the world junior record, um, and as I said, when Christ comes back, it probably will be. Um, there's no way you can watch a 17-year-old run 19.93 for 200 meters with that kind of ease and not know what's coming. At just 17, Bolt headed to the 2004 Olympics as one of the favorites in the 200 meters. But there were concerns as to how this precocious young talent would handle his newfound adulation and the pressure of competing against senior athletes. They said when I go out there and see the curves, it'll be different, so I was trying to get myself prepared. Going out there, being on track, and doing my best. Problems with injury and the pressure overwhelmed him. Bolt was eliminated in his first round heat. Jamaica's great hope had learned there was still much work to be done before he could become the best. Well, he found, as I found out, that the junior ranks and the senior ranks, big gap. When you break through as a junior, you're going up against people you saw on TV. And then sometimes that really confuses your brain because you have to come as a competitor, not a fan. I'm not really used to losing, but uh, I think I'm preparing my mind to really get used to being beat by seniors. I'm not wishing to be beat by seniors, but I have to be prepared, so uh, transition has been okay so far. Bolt looked fitter and stronger in the 2005 World Championships, but still finished well behind the world's leading sprinters. One of the things that makes him special is uh, the experience that he had early on in, in his life. He, had, he was exposed to a lot of success, but he also had some hardship that forced him to look within himself and to make some adjustments. But by 2007, Bolt was fully grown, injury-free, and winning races. He had matured and was now ready to test himself against the best. And that meant US athlete Tyson Gay in the World Championships. I knew Usain from um, watching him in 04, you know, when he was younger, um, watching him in 05, and we were kind of had a 200 meter rivalry um, since um, 06 in Jamaica um, and so forth. So yeah, I definitely knew who he was. Gay proved too strong for Bolt in the final, but it was a first medal for the Jamaican in a major championship. He's good, man, he's good. That's all I gotta say, he's good. <laughs> but uh, it was a good performance. I think I did pretty well, but I guess he was a better man on this day.
That silver medal was the turning point in Usain Bolt's career. It gave him the motivation to improve. And back in Jamaica, he prioritized the 100 meters. In only his second attempt at the distance, he ran an incredible 9.76 in Kingston, the second fastest time in history. It looked so easy. It was, it was that, that time cannot be right. And then the following, I think it was two weeks later, I broke the world record and I was like, okay, he, he's for real, he's for real. He, he's going to be something really special. Special was an understatement. In his fifth 100 meter race, he broke compatriot Asifa Powell's world record, a run of 9.72 in June 2008. Somebody 6'5 is not supposed to be able to turn his legs over like somebody 5'9. That was old news, you know. Now the taller sprinters are, are taking over, so, you know, the taller you are, I think it's better now, nowadays. His stride length is ridiculous. He takes less effort, but he has been doing a wonderful job and he, he's something special. It helps enormously, you know, especially a guy like him to run as fast as he can being so tall. I mean, being 6'5", his stride length is this big and mine is this big, so he covers a lot more ground than I cover, so that's where his advantage comes in. In Beijing, at the 2008 Olympic Games, the world's gaze turned to one man. From 2001, I knew that Usain Bolt was going to do something, you know, spectacular in, tra in track and field. So it really didn't surprise me. It was just a matter of time. When was he going to do it and what was he going to run? Set. Having stormed through his 100-meter heats in confident style, Bolt then jogged to victory in his semi-final in 9.85. No one had ever made the event look so easy. I mean, you're back there, man, and, and you're hurting, and, and you're like, man, what is your problem? What do you got to run so fast? I mean, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? You know, it's heartbreaking sometimes. Not just losing, but losing badly. When you're putting in your all and somebody's making it look so easy, you really question your ability and, and your presence there. The final was no formality. With Tyson Gay injured, Asifa Powell was still the favorite for many. But Powell had always carried the weight of a nation on his shoulders. Jamaicans are very hard to please, so, you know, it's ex expectations are always there. They've been wanting to stop to bring home their gold medal for a long time. He's been the world record holder. He's been undefeated for a year or so and things as well so i'm pretty sure you saying feeling as well but i mean i think he may be a different guy this is his first time really running the hundred so you know he's a young guy he likes to have fun and go out there and give it all the guys so he may take it a little easier than other people may but on the 16th of august 2008 in beijing's bird's nest stadium history was about to be made With a run of 9.69 seconds, Bolt made the blue ribboned event his own. His rival, Powell, finished only fifth. The world hailed the fastest man on the planet. During the race, I, I thought I had a very good start. Then I saw the, the, the tall fella coming by and I tried to run with him, which is something I should never have tried. And he just messed up my, the last part of my race. So when I looked over and I saw him beating his chest, I was like, this is just amazing. I was very happy. It was history making. I was surprised of, of his performance. I never expect anyone to run that fast. It just went by very fast, you know, before I could think, you know, the race was, was over. I was like, man, this is, this is amazing. I mean, we didn't think we would see that. Everyone was supporting short in Jamaica. Jamaica did great there. You know, it was like a Jamaican sports day. Since that day, everything has been Jamaica, all Jamaica, all Jamaica since then. So he did a, a marvelous thing there. When I ran the, the earlier round, I, I felt the world record. It, it was possible because the track is very quick, it's new. So I was happy, but I came out here just to win. That was my main aim. I came out here and I did that, so I'm just happy with myself. And I know my country is also happy with me. While the party continued in Jamaica, next up was Bolt's favourite event, the 200 metres. While everyone expected the gold, few imagined he would break another world record. The one that everybody, I think, did not see coming was 
breaking of the 1932 uh, Michael Johnson world record. And I said, wait a minute, this guy just ran 969 turning around. I said, okay, so clearly he can run sub 10 on the turn. I said, if he runs sub 10 on the turn, 99 on the turn, well, guess what? He's halfway there. Bolt had made it clear it was the 200 meters he really wanted to win. There was no jogging this time. He gave everything for gold. Bolt finished the race in 19.30 seconds, a new world record, and another devastating performance that stunned fans, experts, and fellow athletes. That 200 was ridiculous, because by the time I finished the race, Bolt was already at the 200 meter start on his victory lap. I was like, man, I did not even realize I was in the same race with him, so <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> to see him take down that record in the manner that he did with, you know, nobody around him was just absolutely special. Usain Bolt, you know, just kind of makes people stop and rethink what they thought was possible, and uh, he's incredible. Of all the races that he's run, all the world records that I've been around for, my favorite is that, even though he's run faster, my favorite in terms of how he attacked the race is still that 1930 in Beijing. One event remained for the fastest man in the world, the 4 by 100 meter relay, and a chance for Bolt to claim his third gold medal. After the 100 and then the 200, I, I was like, all right, I know for sure, we definitely can, can break this, this, this world record. I was just like, all right, let's just make it a, a clean sweep. And we went out there and we did that. With three Olympic gold medals and three world records, Usain Bolt had written himself into the history books. For his nation, he was the figurehead of a new breed of Jamaican athlete, both male and female, who were dominated at the sprint events in Beijing. You have shown that not only are we capable of the best in the world, but we are the best in the world. It turned Jamaica into the most copied nation on the planet because I went down to Jamaica for the high school championships the next year and everybody was there. Every shoe company, every agent, every coach, anybody affiliated with track and field now was going to Jamaica to say, okay, who's the next one? And, and, how, and how soon can I sign him? If Jamaica had been transformed, Usain Bolt's star quality had an enormous impact on the sport of track and field itself. It's amazing because now the persons who were never track and field fans now know about track and field because of him. He brought a lot more fans to the sport. He's been doing a lot for the sport. You know, um, he's been breaking records, you know, winning you know, the major championships. No, you know, a lot more people are tuning into it and, you know, watching to see, you know, what he's going to do next, you know, what is going to happen next. So, you know, he, he has had a very positive impact on the sport. He's really brought, I think, a bigger fan base from the United States to the sport as well. So he's even brought my fan base up because people in the United States want me to beat him. So I think what he's done for the sport has helped me out a lot as, in being American as well. And all the while, Bolt continued to run very fast. Over the next year, he remained unbeaten, consistently the fastest man over both the 100 and 200 metres. His next goal was the 2009 World Championships in Berlin. I don't fear any athletes, really, um, no matter what time you're running. Uh, as I said, I'm always confident in myself because I know I train hard and I work very hard for what I want. And it was very important to me to win the World Championship this year, and it, it will be a stepping stone for me in being a legend if I win, so I'm working on it. The pressure was on Bolt to deliver in Germany, but he was not feeling it. I think one of his strengths are his confidence. He has more of a kid-like confidence. You know, some kids go out and to a baseball game, basketball, they just have fun. He doesn't let that pressure get to him, just a fun confidence. You know, I'm having fun, I'm doing what I love, and if I win, I win and we'll see how it goes. You say he work hard, I can tell that for sure. And he's a guy who loves to compete. And once you love to compete, I guess you'll get that natural to always going out there and try to win. 
His main competition in the 100 metres this time came from his old US rival, Tyson Gay. Tyson Gay was running very fast that year. He had run some fast times and he knew that he had to run that fast to win. Set. You saw him towards the beginning, the middle, he started to pull away. I tried to make a move. Um, you know, I pretty much ran out of real estate. I didn't know if he would run that fast, but he did, and that was just something I had to deal with. I don't know if he knew he was going that fast, but for the first time, I think we've seen him, he ran the, the 100 meters all out. No chest pumping or anything like that. He ran straight through the line, so. I thought he was gonna break the world record, but not by that much. I was very surprised, and I knew he was going to break the record, but I didn't, I didn't expect 9.5. I expected like 9.65. It raised the bar for everyone, you know. Um, it gives us a, a target to reach, you know. When you see someone running 9.5, you know, then you, you look at it and say, oh, it's possible. A world record of 9.58 seconds in the 100 was followed by yet another gold medal and yet another world record in the 200 meters. Bolt smashed his own personal best to finish in 19.19 seconds. In his previous five major finals, he had now broken five world records. And it was his stamina that confounded the experts. When Usain ran the 1919, that was after four rounds of 100 meters and three rounds of 200 meters. You must remember that. A further gold in the relay, and Usain Bolt had once again stolen the headlines in the world of track and field. He had established himself as one of the biggest sports stars on the planet, but there was a feeling his focus was beginning to drift. Being a star involves appearances and travel and distractions. And I think now he's seeing that the hardest part of remaining on top is not the training and the running, it's the managing everything else. When he lost to Tyson Gay in Stockholm in August 2010, it seemed the lightning bolt was human after all. But when you take the sport to the next level, you improve the standard of those around you. You have to evolve again with the sport, so now I have to drop my time down and work even harder to get where he's at. We who are behind need to meet him. <laughs> we need to come up to his level. I think this is something that people still haven't even been able to adjust to. Other sprinters haven't been able to adjust to 9.6, 9.7, 9.7, 9.5. I mean, I think it's going to take a while for people to understand what they have to do to get where we're at. Bolt's state of mind was called into question again at the 2011 World Championships but in a manner nobody expected. We all focus, but we have different ways of focusing. He knows what he's doing, and he knows what's at stake for him, so I, I honestly felt that it was genuine. A full start robbed him of the chance to defend his 100-metre title. I did tell him that um, if he did not take his shirt off, he would have been back in the race, I think so. And it's not anything about the sport, but that's the way life is. He has to win, he has to be there. That's the man people come to see. It was a bittersweet moment for us, for me especially. I knew that I teared up a little bit because I wanted to see Usain run. But then when we, we still said, okay, we still have Johan Blake in the race. And Bolt's training partner stole the show with a surprise victory for Jamaica. Johan Blake's win was a vivid example of the Bolt effect, making the rest even better. We thought Usain was special when he was coming up, but now we're seeing other guys, you know, emulating and doing the same thing at his age. So it's all about believing. Once you have seen someone done something, then obviously you're going to have the belief. And I think that's the, the, the biggest thing that's, that's happened to Jamaica. Usain Bolt is not a man to dwell on his mistakes. He went on to deliver golden performances in the 200 metres and then the relay. He had a point to prove and did so emphatically. By the age of 25, Usain Bolt had won three Olympic gold medals, five world championship goals, and recorded seven world records. He is the fastest man to have ever lived, a legend in his own time already, but with so much more still to accomplish. To me, he's still the guy to beat because the world record is still one of my goals, so I think he's still the guy to beat. 
he's still the man to beat. He has to be. There's no one out there, I think, that can beat Usain. Usain can only beat himself. If you look on the progression of Usain Bolt, you could always say that he's going to be someone, a force to be reckoned with. And the way he's doing it now, only God he knows what next for him.